Give the people what they want, Ash. You have nobody to blame but yourselves for what you're about to witness. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. So in my last video I briefly mentioned the ridiculous project that has consumed my life for a short while. Recently Momo O'Brien released a video about getting fully immersed in a tabletop role-playing game and touched on how you can make it more immersive by tapping into all of your senses. But I feel like Momo missed out one large and incredibly immersive activity, building a murder board. Let's go. What is a murder board? Well, you and I might look at this assemblage of notes, photographs, and string on a cork board and think, murder board? It seems like this is a relatively recent development. This is more usually known as an evidence board or a crime board, and it was pretty much invented by crime and thriller movies and television. People didn't do this in real life before some filmmakers decided it was a good visual way to convey obsession. When visual maps like this are used in actual detective work, it seems to be for a single clear purpose without all this clutter and lunacy. <laughs> the phrase murder board actually seems to relate to some kind of peer review stress test process that originated in the Pentagon in the 1960s. The board here is a board in terms of a panel of humans, not a literal cork board. What I'm trying to get at here is that murder boards aren't real. They were made up by Hollywood so you could tell a character was a raging conspiracy theorist or whatever. So why make one? Reason number one, they look badass. Reason number two, it's actually really useful. Over lockdown I've played a lot of tabletop games online, including a couple of games that have been running for over a year year, which I don't know what your tabletop experiences are like, but that never happened when we had to somehow physically get to the same space each week. For one of the games with a heavy mystery and discovery focus and a conspiracy going on in the background, the GM gave us space to build a murder board both in the game and literally on Roll20, with notes and tokens and headers that we could move around and draw lines. It was so helpful to finally put down all the stuff that we knew in one place and we could draw some connections that we hadn't seen before now. Roll forward a couple of months and skip over to a completely different game that I play. We as a group, and my character in specific, had been fed so much information about the secret history of the world we were in, and the plot to end the world that we were desperately trying to stop, and some of that information didn't actually make much sense so I'd stop thinking about it. One of the other characters in this game is a genuine conspiracy theorist, and characters have built murder boards during game time before? Then my character might have like mm, sold his soul and be facing what felt like impending doom in the next couple of weeks, which... Talk about having a mental breakdown and a ridiculous amount of focus all at once. Murder board time! How to make a murder board. Let's look at our supplies. You first of all need some kind of surface to stick things to. I used a mix of corkboard tiles and a big piece of foam core I had lying around. The more spread out you can make it, the cooler the string will look going back and forth. And I found the small corkboards helpful because I could basically do one topic per corkboard and then arrange them on the wall in a way that made the most sense. These are stuck to the wall with command strips. So when I'm done, I can just get rid of this and the wall will be fine. A good murder board has a lot of visual interest, so I found using a variety of materials worked really well for that. Also, as well as literally being on my wall, this murder board also exists within the game world. If that's something you want, think about what materials your character would have access to. In my case, the game is set in the modern day, so I could just go on Amazon and pick up a couple of different sizes of index cards and post-it notes. You will also need pens. This character always has Sharpies on his person, so Sharpies made sense. I picked up a coloured pack for variety. Push pins and string, which is traditionally red. I had a bunch of leftover embroidery floss from the patchwork coat that I made, and this worked really well. I also printed out or recreated a bunch of in-game documents for even more visual interest, and if you're going for accuracy and have time, you could also weather these and make them look super realistic. I am lazy and also busy, so I have not. <laughs> Organising information. On a macro scale, your murder board is going to have clusters of information, and it's important to start by deciding what those clusters broadly are going to be. If you keep going back to a limited set of locations to find more clues or talk to more witnesses, maybe it's places. If you have a bunch of murder suspects who all have their own alibis, motives and connections to cross-check, maybe it's people. In my case, this character gets prophetic dreams that are tied to our story, so I started with one dream per board and expanded from there. And I've tried to put vaguely related things closer to each other than clearly unrelated things. On the micro scale, I find it's easiest to use each different supply for a specific purpose and keep that consistent. So these small blank cards I use for what in an essay would be section titles. Names of people, places, things, written big. On the bigger line index cards I make lists and notes of specific details, all useful but grouped together. Then the post-it notes are for either quotes and things that people have said, or for the character's own thoughts and questions. Finally, the found objects go usually wherever they were found. Because they're so big, I try and get them to hang off the edges as much as I can, and I use two pins on the ones that are at an angle so they don't swing around. Finally, once you've got everything up, it's time to go in with the string. It's up to you if you just want to do confirmed links or if you're going to include suspected links. I found 
found you don't need to go overboard, especially not as first, as too much string makes things very confusing and difficult to add. But just attach it to the push pins and join up any two things that you think have a strong relationship. Final thoughts. Is this a ridiculous object? Yes. Am I pleased I made it? Also yes. I'm not and never have been a fandom person, so while I know that other people I play with make art of their characters or write fic about their games, that's not really ever been a thing for me. The closest I'll usually get with LARP is making this character's costume or props, something tangible, and with tabletop you don't get to do that. So it was actually amazing to be able to celebrate how much I enjoy this game in a way that makes a lot more sense to me. Also this game is so incredibly detailed and complex with so many secrets, I've genuinely made some connections I hadn't before now, and I'm really enjoying the game game to board to game feedback loop. I also love that this exists in the game world too, so now we're not in lockdown anymore, once they actually get to see it in the game, I can literally invite my fellow players over to my house and let them add to it. Thanks for watching this video. I know it's a weird one, but hey, you've met me. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, make the YouTube gods happy. There's a link to my Kofi in the description if you want to make a donation to keep me in Sharpies and index cards for the next six months. And I'll see you next time for some actual quality Halloween content. <sighs> Let's never do this again.